Good morning and Happy New Year. I'm Stacy Eichard, one of the associate pastors here at Westlake Hills Presbyterian Church, where we invite people into God's larger story as we follow Christ together. This morning, I want you to know that we are beginning a project we call Reconnect 2021. And I invite you to go to the church website, to the front page, and click that button and find a way that you could reconnect in study or um, uh, groups uh, that meet on a regular basis. We have so many opportunities starting in January, so be sure and take an opportunity to find out more about that. Also next week, on Sunday the 10th of January, we will begin a new sermon series where Pastor Emily will be talking about the tough questions that we want to ask God, so you're not going to want to miss that. Be sure and check out our app and our website and find out all of the exciting things that are going on. to worship. The Lord is our light and our salvation, so whom shall we fear? The Lord is the stronghold of our lives, so why should we worry? We wait for the Lord, the one who makes us strong and gives our hearts courage. Let us worship God. Join me in prayer. Lord, you make all things new. You bring hope alive in our hearts and cause our spirits to be born again. Thank you for this new year and for all the potential it holds. Come into our lives with your love that casts out fear. Wash us clean of the apathy and the worry that 2020 left on our souls. Revive us to enter 2021 with trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
for us to gather together and worship every week. We get to hear prayers together. We praise God through music. We hear the word of God proclaimed. And friends, we need to be reminded this day that there is a peace that passes all understanding. And it is our responsibility to share that with others. I want to encourage you to send a text or an email or maybe even write a note to someone that you have missed seeing and share the peace of Christ with them. May the peace of Christ be with you. As we approach God's word for this new year, let us pray together. Gracious God, allow your word to wash over us and to speak to us again of your presence and your power. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord, for you are our rock and our salvation. Amen. So I've chosen two passages of scripture for us to begin 2021. And the first comes from the book of Joshua, the first chapter. Listen for God's word to us today. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I've given to you as I promised to Moses. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall put this people in possession of the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Don't turn to it from the right hand or the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And this passage from the Gospel of Matthew. And just then, some people were carrying a paralyzed man laying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Then some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. So Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say, Stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, stand up, take your bed, and go to your home. And he stood up, and he went to his home. And when the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe. And they glorified God who had given such authority to human beings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I want you to take a little trip with me now. 
I want you to travel back with me about 12 months to, let's say, January 3rd, 2020. Think back with me. What were your plans on that day <laughs> for 2020? What were your hopes for 2020? For me, 12 months ago, 2020 was going to be a big year, a full year, an important year. We were planning our very first family reunion with adult children, all their spouses and partners. We were going to go together to a ski trip. Al and I had booked already our bucket list trip to Scotland, which was going to be the huge culmination celebration of our 60th birthdays, which we were going to spend all year celebrating with family and friends. And then there was the wedding, y'all, the wedding for my daughter. And there was time, precious time, that we knew we were going to spend with elderly relatives. My father-in-law, my parents, both getting more frail, and, and we knew that we needed to spend a lot of time with them, that it was going to be precious time. That was the plan. Boy, that is not what happened in 2020, right? Those plans, those hopes, like you, like all of those that we love and live around, like most people on this planet, well, those plans didn't come to pass. So today, as we stand at the beginning of a new year, once again, as we look at those 365 empty squares on the 2021 calendar, there's just one question that haunts me, and maybe it haunts you as well. What's next? What's next? After the year we've had, really, with all still going on around us and between us and within us, the pandemic, the societal reckoning for racial and economic justice, the bitter political division between citizens and friends and family, what's next? One of the things I didn't plan for in 2020 was adopting a pandemic puppy. But back in Al, after two years in two two years, two months in quarantine, Alan and I decided to rescue a mutt from this shelter in a little town north of San Antonio. Now Nipsey is her name, and she's an affectionate, smart, energetic dog, really cute. But like many dogs who end up in shelter, she she seems to have had a pretty rough life. When we first brought her home, she was literally traumatized by whatever had transpired in those first years of her little life. She spent every waking moment of every hour, ears up, eyes wide, literally looking around where she was in fear of whatever might happen next. You could hold her as long as you let her look out, you know, so she could see what was coming next. And you could feed her as long as her bowl positioned so her back end was by the wall and she could look out at the room while she ate to see what was coming next. She walked well on a leash, but she had to stay three feet behind you so that she was, you know, protected from whatever might be coming next. And if she came by a car or a plant or some kind of corner where she couldn't see what was coming next, she would just freeze, freeze and tremble in fear, shaking with fear, unable to move. Now, we learned that Nipsey's behavior is fairly common for a rescued dog. But watching Nipsey, living with Nipsey, working with Nipsey these last six months, it did teach me something. It taught me to pay attention to those moments those situations when the next looms large and you must move forward without knowing what will happen or how it will turn out. It taught me to honor such moments when you can't see the future, but you're called to step into it with confidence. It happens all the time. When you're faced with a new job or a major move, when they place that tiny infant in your arms right after delivery, when you have to decide about retirement, when you receive the diagnosis, when you wake up the day after the funeral and a new reality has set in. 
It happens all the time that we are called to move into something new, into the next, the next challenge, the next stage of life without seeing or knowing what lies ahead. Recently, I was talking with a young couple that I'm about to marry, and I I wanted to know, what are your emotions about this new life you're about to start? And without even, like, missing a beat, they said, well, we're excited and scared. I said, well, what are you excited about? And quickly they said, we're excited about beginning our family and moving halfway across the country from everyone we know. I said, well, then what are you afraid of? And they said, we're afraid of starting a new family and moving across the country from everyone we know. Sound familiar? Here's the thing. These moments when we can't know the future and the possibilities for fulfillment or trouble, for joy or distress are ripe. When we stand at the bend of the road and we wait and wonder, what's next? Those are the moments that faith matters and fear is a formidable enemy. Joshua and God's people Israel, they stood at such a moment in our scripture lesson today. The wilderness is behind them. The promised land is before them. The next thing for them includes waging war against the people who live in that promised land. The next thing involves moving forward without Moses. Moses has died. The next thing means a different way of life and a new set of responsibilities. Sure, God has led them, protected them, sustained them for 40 years, but this moment is a new day with new leadership, a new mission, and there are no guarantees. So fear permeates the scene. In Matthew's gospel, we read about a paralyzed man brought to Jesus. Unlike Luke's gospel, there's no roof in this story, just a man laying on a cot, unable to move, hopeful friends, and stern religious leaders watching on. Stern religious leaders that label this paralyzed man a sinner, that believe his physical ailments reveal some kind of deep dirt of his soul. These religious leaders had the power to harm the man. They had the power to harm those helping him. And that fear usually kept people in line. But Jesus had arrived in Capernaum. And the possibility of something greater, something more merciful, had come to town. The paralyzed man's friends in this moment must make a choice to bring him to Jesus, not knowing what will happen next. A few of you knew my father-in-law, Don Krumenacher. He died a few months ago. And as I've said before, he was my hero. He was my hero not because of his love and support, though it was astounding, and not because of the example he set for my family of commitment and steadiness, though it was profound. No, he was my hero because as he lived into his 90s, he faced tough moments when the next thing, the future, was unwanted and unclear, but he always stepped out in faith. About three years ago, after facing a medical uh, crisis at about 91, dad was offered the opportunity to have a surgery, a surgery that would increase his quality of life. It might allow him to live longer and be able to care for mom. He wanted to be there for her. It also would give him a little more independence, but it was risky, and the doctors made no guarantees that he could survive the surgery. I remember walking out of that medical building with Al and Dad, Dad on his walker. We were walking slowly down a really dreary hall, you know, those halls in the medical buildings. In fact, this hall was so dreary that they had put those horrible inspirational posters down the hall, you know, the ones with the sunrises and the rainbows and all that stuff and pithy quotes. And he got tired and we stopped by one of these posters and he looked up at the poster and smiled and he He kind of pointed to it for Al and I. And I kid you not, that poster said, never let fear decide your future. Never let fear. And he had the surgery. 
He lived another uh, three years, and frankly, he lived bravely into every next thing that came his way until his very last days. Friends, here is the truth, the truth we need to remember as we begin 2021, and I believe it's the truth that 2020 taught us. We can't know the future. We can't know what the next thing might bring for us or our family, our church or world. No matter how we try to control our lives or order our lives or hedge our bets, we just can't see what's around that corner. And fear, well, fear of what we can't know, of what we can't see about the future, it's real and it's powerful. It can stop us in our tracks. It can paralyze us, keep us from moving forward, and keep us from the life that God intends for us. We can't know what's next. But hear the good news. Our God does. Our God does. In fact, God holds what's next. God holds the future. And this is no cold or aloof or uncaring deity. This is the God we know in Jesus Christ. The God whose love is so deep and high and wide that it gave us Jesus. This is the God who came to Joshua in that moment of decision, that what next moment, and said, don't be afraid. I will be with you four times in ten verses. Don't be afraid. I will be with you. Walk into the future with confidence, Joshua, not because you know what will happen, but because I, the Lord your God, I do know, and I'll be by your side. This is the God who walked the earth in Jesus Jesus, who told that paralyzed man and his friends in their moment of decision, their what's next moment, take heart. Take heart. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the label that's been placed on you. Don't be afraid of these religious leaders and their power. Walk into the future with confidence, not because you have it all figured out, but because I, I, Jesus, I have the authority and power to work it out. So Nipsey's now been with us for six months, and I'll be honest with you, she's always going to be a nervous dog, but I'm happy to report that she has relaxed. She has learned to feel safe. She can handle surprises now, and even new things now. When something new arrives, instead of freezing in fear, she just looks up at Al and I really intently, really hard, as if to say, is this okay? Is this good? Should I be concerned? And when we tell her, it's okay, girl, it's okay, she trusts us. She has some faith in us. Corey Ten Boom, the Christian writer and Holocaust survivor, knew something of trust and faith, and she gives this advice to Christians dealing with fear of the unknown. She wrote, never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. That's faith, trusting an unknown future to a known God. That's faith, the assurance of things hoped for and conviction of things not seen. That's faith. Beginning a new year in the darkest days of a pandemic with hope and with confidence. The faith that took Joshua and the Israelites to the promised land. The faith that redeemed a man lying on a cot, a man who took heart, got up, and walked into new life. The faith available to you, to me, to our families, and to this church. Beloved in Christ, Brothers and sisters, we can't see what's next. We don't know what this new year holds. But we do know that God's love and God's mercy moves into the future first. It always has. It always will. So take a deep breath, my friends. It's 2021. Like Joshua, be strong and of good courage. Like that man on the cot, take heart and don't be afraid. Our God goes before us and beside us. 
And our God holds us and holds the year ahead. Happy New Year. Amen. Friends, as we prepare for this time of prayer, I want to remind you that prayer is an important pillar of who we are at this church. Every week we send out a prayer list, and on our app we have three specific prayer requests that we encourage the entire community to pray for. If you have something that you want the pastors to know about, please email us. There's even a spot on our website where you can fill that out. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for your powerful word that gives us encouragement, that gives us life in the midst of our fear. We thank you that you are going before us. You are paving the way for whatever lies before us. And so God, we trust you. We trust you to increase our faith in this moment. God, help us to lean in to the fact that you are always 100% faithful. It is your faith that is great. All we need to do is just clasp on a little bit. God, as we are silent, but for a moment, all of our worries and anxieties about the coming weeks, they seem to bubble up. And so, God, in silence, we offer these to you now. holy and gracious God, for whatever is coming next, we trust you. Holy and merciful God, for whatever you are going to require of us to do next, we trust you. Holy and loving God, for whatever we are needed to do next. We trust you, God. We trust you, God, with all that we are and all that we have. And we do this because we know you loved us so much that you sent us Jesus, who taught us how to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Unravel me with a melody You surround me with a song Of deliverance from my enemies Until all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave I want you to remember this week that you are a child of God and that whatever you face, you need not fear. You are not alone. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us today and in this year to come. Amen. Amen.